Okay, thank you very much uh, for the introduction. So uh, to, to give you a, a, a quick uh, overview of our results. So what, what we do is break uh, a new uh, additively homomorphic encryption scheme that was introduced by uh, Chon Lee and So uh, at uh, SCMCCS uh, 2014. Uh, so actually, so the, we, we give uh, three different uh, attacks, uh, slightly different attacks, that, that give you uh, various information. Uh, so they, they're based on uh, orthogonal lattices or uh, coppersmith techniques, depending on the attack. So, um, so we, we defeat uh, both the symmetric and public variance of the scheme. Uh, we defeat, so, so it's based on a new assumption called uh, co-ACD, and uh, we, we also break uh, uh, more general instances of that, uh, more general than uh, those that are used in the construction of the scheme themselves. So, um, so most of the attacks are heuristic. So the first one, you can probably prove them, but we, we didn't bother. Uh, you, you, but uh, uh, the other ones are mostly heuristic. But uh, in practice, uh, for so the, 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 the authors uh, propose parameters, and for those parameters, it's uh, uh, really easy, easy to break everything. Uh, and and uh, it's easy to see that uh, uh, the, the, the attack still works for until very, very large parameters. So, uh, it, it makes the, the scheme uh, much less interesting than was uh, thought originally. And so you, you, you may notice that uh, Chon Li and So are also uh, uh, authors on papers that attacked uh, multi, uh, the CLT multinear maps. Uh, so the, that's uh, totally unrelated to the fact that we are attacking their paper. Um, uh, so, uh, okay, so, so additively homomorphic encryption, it's a quite useful primitive, so use, uh, use it for in many protocols, uh, e-voting, uh, 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 PIR, um, computation outsourcing, and so on. And, uh, uh, and we, we don't have so many construction of it. So, so, so we have some, uh, of course, Payet, Andrew, and other, uh, you can use it, base it on Andrew and others. But, uh, but, but uh, most of them are not so efficient, and so, so having uh, more efficient options uh, would be very nice. Um, and so, uh, uh, so the, the authors, uh, Chony and Sob, served that uh, you can construct it very easily from uh, uh, the approximate uh, common divisor problem, uh, but, uh, but uh, you need uh, huge parameters to, to, to make it, the, the problem uh, hard. So, so uh, as a result, it's not very efficient. So their idea is, uh, uh, could we tweak uh, the ACD problem in such a way that uh, you still uh, uh, have a simple uh, scheme for uh, uh, additive homomorphic encryption, but uh, with uh, much better parameters, and so uh, interesting efficiency. <coughs> so, so here's the way you, you, you can construct, uh, so, so here's first the, the ACD assumption. Um, so basically, so you take uh, some uh, integer, uh, which is the product of some uh, uh, moderately large primes and some uh, uh, large number Q, and you ask whether you can distinguish between uh, uh, a number, uh, this CRT here, which has uh, uh, small reductions mod modulo the prime PI, and a number which is completely random. So that's, that's the decision version of the ACD assumption. And so if, if uh, this problem is hard, then it's easy to construct a, a homo additively homomorphic encryption based on it. So what you do is, uh, so this, uh, the, the factors of this uh, number x0 are the, is the secret key. You, you fix some constant q, and uh, what you do is uh, uh, to encrypt some message, uh, which, con which is uh, 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 consists uh, of uh, numbers less than this, this constant q. Uh, you simply add q to uh, some uh, uh, q times e1, q times en, etc., which are random elements plus some randomness here uh, to, to complete it. And, uh, and this number C, so uh, if, if the uh, assumption above is hard, then this, this should be indistinguishable from random if you don't have the secret key. So the, this is uh, uh, in CPA if, uh, if the problem above is hard. And to decrypt, you just, uh, uh, to recover MI, you just uh, uh, reduce this mod P, PI and uh, then reduce mod Q. Okay, so so with co CoACD, uh, is, is 
OECD, so it's, it's kind of a dual, uh, though I, I can't make that, uh, that statement very precise. It's kind of, a, it looks like a dual of the ACD assumption, so it's, it's the reverse. So it's, instead of uh, 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 combining uh, CR, uh, uh, elements with the CRT, you, you kind of uh, separate them. So what you do, the, 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 the assumption says that, uh, uh, so you, you, you fix uh, some uh, primes, uh, P1, Pn, uh, and some constant Q, and uh, the assumption says that uh, 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 relatively small randomness E multiplied by Q, uh, mod P1, etc., mod Pn, is uh, indistinguishable from uh, 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 the same vector of elements less than P1, less than Pn, if you don't know the, the primes Pi themselves. Uh, so, of course, the randomness E needs to be uh, larger than, uh, than at least uh, each of the PIs for this to make sense, uh, but uh, not too large either, so it's, it's larger than the PIs, but less than the product or something like this. <laughs> okay, and so, so then you also get, uh, similarly, a, a homomorphic encryption scheme, basically to encrypt a message M, which is less than Q, you just add it to, uh, uh, so you, you uh, give out the vector of elements, uh, m uh, plus eq, uh, mod, P, mod p1, mod p2, et cetera, mod pn. And so to decrypt, you, you compute the, the, uh, back the, the, the element uh, mod the, the product uh, using uh, the Chinese remnant of theorem, and uh, you reduce mod q, and you ret ret retrieve m. <coughs> okay. So, so, so uh, those schemes are sort of uh, similar in, in many aspects. So, for example, these are uh, uh, symmetric key schemes that you can uh, convert them to public key by uh, uh, giving out as a public key uh, the product of the PIs uh, and many encryptions of zero so that uh, you can sample uh, uh, randomness. Uh, so, uh, so the, the, the ACD-based scheme, so as I said, is very efficient because the, uh, for security, you need ciphertexts that are very large, like millions of bits. Uh, but uh, uh, what John et al. said is that the, the co-ACD version uh, should be secure with much uh, smaller uh, parameters. So they, they gave out, so uh, Q is uh, like 256 bits, and the, the primes themselves are two of them, and they're like uh, 1,500 1, bits. And uh, for such a choice of parameters, so actually CLS encryption becomes quite eff efficient. Like uh, it's, it's much faster than PAI. <coughs> But uh, unfortunately, it's not that secure. Uh, so, so what I'll describe is uh, two of our three attacks. Uh, uh, so the first one, uh, <coughs> so first, uh, uh, so I'll, I'll, for simplicity, I'll only consider the case of two primes, which is the one considered in the original paper. But uh, in our, if you read the paper, we generalize that to uh, more primes, uh, uh, which breaks also the assumption. So. So the first attack says that uh, if, if uh, I give you a few known plain text, then uh, you can de decrypt everything. Uh, so the, this breaks uh, the, the one-wayness of the, the encryption. So the, 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 I'm considered the symmetric version, but of course it also breaks the, the public, public version, and it breaks the, the decisional version of the QACD problem, and it's based on orthogonal lattices. Uh, so, to, so how does the attack look like? So let's say, so I have uh, a C1CT ciphertext corresponding to messages, M1, MT, and I know all of those messages except the first one, and I want to, to recover M1. <coughs> uh, so what I do is write uh, those ciphertexts, uh, so they are pairs, uh, something reduced mod, so M plus, plus EQ reduced mod P1 and uh, mod P2, uh, and I put all the, C, the, the first pairs uh, reduced mod P1 in some, in some vector C1, and the pairs reduced mod P2 in some C2. And uh, so I have uh, those expressions uh, expressed as vectors of uh, T components. So then I consider, uh, <coughs> so we introduce uh, uh, U, which is a short vector orthogonal to the difference between those two. Okay, so what I observe is that uh, I'd be interested in this vector in particular, which is M plus EQ minus C1. And so uh, this vector is a multiple of P1, and it's C1 minus C2 minus a multiple of P2. 
So this means that if, if I take the scalar product between uh, v, u and v, then uh, this uh, scalar product uh, is divisible both by p1, because uh, v is already divisible by p1, and also by p2, because uh, the scalar product is zero times uh, plus a multiple of p2. So it's, uh, it's divisible by the product. But uh, so you, you, the pro uv is div divisible by uh, the, this product, but uh, the, the component v itself is much smaller than n. Um, so as a result, uh, if u is uh, small enough, then uh, uv uh, should be zero over z. Uh, and so in particular, so since v is uh, m uh, minus c1 minus eq, if I reduce uh, this mod q, I should get uh, that uh, the scalar product between uh, u and m minus c1 is, uh, is divisible by q. Uh, and recall that uh, the components of m are, are less than q. So as a result, um, uh, so recall that I know u, because uh, I can find the short vectors in lattices. I, I know uh, c1, and I know all the components of m except the first. So I get a nice uh, linear, uh, uh, linear relation uh, in, in, the, in the last uh, unknown components of m, mod q, and so I, re I can uh, recover it, at least uh, if a certain GCD condition is satisfied, and otherwise uh, I can try another u or something like that. And so, it, it, uh, so, so you can compute the, the success condition on the, the, basically the dimension of the lattice. Uh, it's pretty easy, and you find that at least the short vector exists if this is verified. Uh, and so for, for known parameters, the, the parameters proposed by uh, CLS, uh, they propose several for uh, one 28-bit security, and uh, it always works for t equals four, so three known plain texts, and I retrieve decrypt any ciphertext with 100% uh, probability uh, uh, attacks in a few milliseconds. So you can actually pick parameters so that uh, of course, you can, so finding a vector, so the, the, if, if the parameters become big, the, the lattice dimension becomes very big, and uh, you have a loss in, uh, in what you can expect to do with the lattice reduction. So if, if, you, if you pick your primes very large, then, uh, then you, you can ensure that uh, it's infeasible to find a, a, a vector which is short enough in the lattice. But for this, you, you need the, the primes to be at least something like uh, uh, 400,000 bits. Uh, a minimum, and so uh, so of course this defeats the efficiency purpose of the of the scheme. Uh, so the second attack that I won't uh, describe in details is uh, slightly different. So it, it doesn't require any known plain text at all, uh, but it only lets you de decrypt uh, small messages. So if, you, if I give you a, a vector of small messages, then I decrypt and I can uh, I can decrypt every all of them without having any known plain text. And it, it uses this time doubly orthogonal lattices. So as a result, it's very heuristic. But uh, it works very well in practice. You can generalize it in larger n and so on. And so the, the last attack, um, so it's say on the public key variant of CLS or the, the, the uh, search version of the OECD assumption. So what it does is, uh, so, so in, in, the, in this public key variant of CLS, the, the, the public key is uh, the product uh, n equals p1, p2, and, uh, and say uh, encryptions of zero. <coughs> and so what we show is that uh, this, this data, the, just the public key, is enough to recover uh, uh, both of the primes p1, p2 to factor n, so you get a full recovery uh, with just the public key. And so, as I said, it breaks the search variant of QCD. You can generalize it for larger n and so on. And uh, what it uses is a combination of uh, usual lattice reduction together with uh, uh, Coppersmith techniques. So it works like this. So what you have is a, a T encryptions of zero. And your goal is to recover P1, P2, and you know n. So, uh, so we, we do a similar thing as before. So uh, so we put the first uh, coordinates, the C1s, the things that reduce mod P1 into a vector uh, large C1, uh, the, the things reduce mod P2 into a vector large C2. And uh, so these are uh, respectively the reductions mod P1 and P2 of uh, e, e times Q. There is no message because the message is zero now. Uh, and as a result, so if, if you write the CRT relation, what you find is that uh, uh, E times Q is uh, C1 minus C2 times 
uh, this thing is not P1, it's P1 bar, it's the, the CRT, first CRT coefficient plus a C2 mod N. Um, so uh, what you find is that E is a linear combination mod N of uh, C1 minus C2 and uh, this thing. <coughs> Uh, so we introduce some lattice here, which is uh, generated by uh, the uh, dimension t, t plus one, uh, generated by uh, the rows of, uh, so C, C1 minus C2 and zero, uh, C2 times Q minus one mod N and uh, two to the row, and uh, uh, diagonal of Ns, uh, so, uh, so it's a sub-lattice of, uh, so the, in, in those uh, T first component, it's a sub-lattice of, uh, of uh, n times the n, uh, n times the t. And uh, so as it contains as uh, short vectors, c1 minus c2, and uh, uh, this thing v2. Uh, so uh, as I said, e is a, is a linear combination of these two, so it, it contains as a short vector this one. <coughs> so uh, what you can so show is uh, for, for that for t large enough, uh, so those two vectors are uh, much shorter, or should, are expected to be much shorter than uh, all other independent vectors in the lattice. And so if you do a, a good job at lattice reduction, you should find that the, your two, the first two vectors of your reduced basis should be V1, maybe up to sine, and uh, uh, so the second one, uh, uh, x2, should, should be uh, such that uh, v2 is uh, x2 plus uh, a, multiple of, a small multiple of x1. And so th th that's uh, how I introduce uh, Copper Smith here. So, um, so uh, if, if I look at, uh, um, let's say, c c I look at the first com comp component of uh, uh, the first uh, uh, ciphertext, uh, and it satisfies that uh, it's C11 minus uh, QE1 is a multiple of P1. And so C12 minus QE2 is a multiple of P2, so the product is a multiple of N. And so this is E1 and this is E2. Uh, so, 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 sorry, this is E1 and this is E1. Uh, so as a result, the, this coefficient alpha here, which is small, uh, is a small root of uh, uh, this polynomial here, for which I know all of the coefficients. And uh, as a result, uh, Coppersmith's theorem uh, tells me that uh, so I can find uh, small roots uh, uh, modulo, uh, modulo some uh, numbers with uh, unknown factorization of, uh, of a polynomial. And so I can find alpha, and as a result, I can find the vector E, and as a result, I can find, uh, I can factor N by computing uh, the GCD between uh, C1 minus uh, EQ and N. So, so you can uh, check uh, the lattice dimension for this to work, uh, so that's the condition. And so uh, for parameters in the original paper, you find that uh, T equals three uh, is actually enough, so, so it necessarily breaks uh, all instances of the public key scheme. Uh, in practice, uh, running the attacks uh, takes uh, less than half a second with a 100% success rate with a naive implementation. And uh, you can uh, uh, extend it to larger n. So in th that case, you, you need a, um, a variant of a Coppersmith Copper theorem due to Alexander May. And uh, it's also very efficient, uh, and, uh, but maybe not so efficient depending on which parameter you check. So, so it's useful to rely on a, an improvement of Coppersmith computation due to B et al. Uh, at uh, PKC uh, last year. Okay, so, <laughs> so, so as a result, so, so to conclude, uh, so what we did is uh, break uh, CLS encryption and quasi problem are pretty much broken. Um, so you can still obtain safe parameter choices, um, probably, at least to resist that attack is possible, but uh, they are too large to be of uh, much practical interest. Um, so actually, so th this paper came after uh, another one where uh, we, we, we broke uh, with uh, Tancred, where we broke uh, a uh, more naive, uh, uh, actively homomorphic scheme by, by those authors. PIR. Uh, so, so they, they also claimed a very efficient uh, additively homomorphic scheme, but unfortunately it was very insecure. And so it seems that uh, it's a pretty hard problem, but uh, 
I'd like to say that uh, it, sh it shouldn't keep us from looking for new uh, interesting assumptions, which should be interesting in crypto. Uh, and actually, so we, we don't have so many papers recently that, uh, uh, that introduce uh, um, assumptions, especially give security parameters for them and uh, uh, give uh, work for the crypto analysts. Thank you very much. <laughs>